Examine the liner system. Lay the liner flat on your work area. Check protective wristlets for shrinkage, excessive stretching, and physical damage. Pull at the sides to see if there is sufficient elasticity. If the wristlets have thumb holes, check them as well. Examine the seams that attach the wristlets to your liner system. Look for missing or broken stitches. Check the seam integrity by grasping material on both sides of the seam. Pull them in opposite directions while looking for weaknesses as you work your way around the sleeve. Damaged or improperly functioning wristlets should be marked on the inspection form and repaired before returning the garment to service. Examine the face cloth of your thermal liner and substrate of your moisture barrier. When checking the thermal liner face cloth, you'll need to turn the sleeves and legs inside out so the face cloth of the thermal liner is on the outside. Inspect all seams, looking for broken or missing stitches. Check each seam's integrity by grasping material on both sides of the seam and pulling in opposite directions. As you pull, look for weak areas where the seam separates and opens. Note the location of the weak areas on your inspection form. Check the fabric of your face cloth and substrate of your moisture barrier for physical damage, such as rips, tears, cuts, and abrasions, damaged or missing hardware, thermal damage, such as charring, burn holes, melting, or discoloration. Give extra attention to locations that correspond with damage discovered on the outer shell. If you find any, note it on the inspection form. Discoloration, significant changes in material texture, and loss of material strength can be signs of UV, heat, or chemical degradation. If you discover any damage on the face cloth of your thermal liner or on the substrate of the moisture barrier, document it on the inspection form and mark it for either additional testing or repair. You also need to perform a light evaluation on your liner composite. It is helpful to have a person assist you. You will also need a light source that provides enough light to show changes in the thickness of the liner materials. It should not produce enough heat to damage the liner composite. The light's bulbs should not make direct contact with the liner composite and it needs to be able to fit into the sleeves of your coat. In this example, the inspector is using a fluorescent trouble light. Slowly pass the light over the liner system. As you observe the light's movement, the brightness should be uniform. If it's brighter in some areas than others, this could be an indication of insulating material shifting or migrating, and a complete liner inspection needs to be performed prior to returning the garment to service. Perform the light test on the front and back panels, upper back, shoulders, underarms, and sleeves of the coat, and on the waist, knees, and crotch areas of the pants. Also check areas where thermal damage was identified during your examination of the outer shell and liner system. As part of an advanced inspection, you also must test the moisture barrier for leakage. First, examine the substrate for any discoloration. Discoloration is a symptom of damage. If you spot it, test that area of the moisture barrier for leakage. Use this field test to check for leaks. Mix one part isopropyl alcohol with six parts tap water. Place the liner system over a five gallon bucket on a flat surface. The moisture barrier should be facing up. Cup the liner area that you want to evaluate so it's lower than the surrounding liner. Pour one cup of the alcohol water mixture onto the moisture barrier. After three minutes, check the thermal barrier side to see if the liquid has leaked. If it has, it must be sent to the manufacturer or verified ISP for repair or be replaced. Also, test the broadest part of the shoulders, back waist area of the coat, knees, crotch area, and seat area of the pants for leakage. After completion of this field test, the liner must be washed thoroughly to purge the alcohol. If there is no leakage or previously identified damage, and a complete liner inspection is not required, inspect the DRD. If the coat does not have a DRD, then reinstall the liner system and return it to service. Coats manufactured to meet the latest edition of NFPA 1971 standards are equipped with a drag rescue device, or DRD. During an advanced inspection, you need to remove the DRD from the coat and examine it. Look for soiling, contamination, and physical damage, such as cuts, tears, punctures, cracking, or splitting. Thermal damage, such as charring, burn holes, melting, or discoloration, and loss of seam integrity, and broken or missing stitches. If you discover any physical or thermal damage to the DRD, 
recorded on the inspection form and mark the DRD for retirement. Do not return the damaged DRD to service. If the DRD is deemed fit for duty, reinstall it according to manufacturer's instructions. Make sure all attachments are functional and the webbing has no twists. If the advanced inspection was satisfactory, reassemble the garment and return it to service. If it needs repair or additional testing, send it either to a verified ISP or the manufacturer. Once a liner system has been in service for three years, a complete liner inspection needs to be performed annually. To conduct a complete liner inspection, you must open the liner system to expose all layers for visual examination. If you have a sewn together liner system, separate the thermal liner from the moisture barrier at the hem seams of the coat and the waistband of the pants. Some garments may have an inspection port that allows the liner to be completely inverted and does not require a seam to be opened. If you have a separable liner, detach the Velcro, unzip the liner system, and separate the thermal liner from the moisture barrier. Examine the inside of the thermal liner for thin spots, which can indicate wear, damage of material, compression, or migration of fibers. Inspect by running your gloved hand across the internal surface of the thermal liner. If you feel thin areas or ridges, it could be an indication of breakdown, damage, compression, or migration of fibers. Special attention should be given to known compression areas, such as the shoulder, elbow, and knee. Inspect the film side of the moisture barrier by running your gloved hands across the surface. If you feel thin areas or ridges, it could be a sign of damage, noted on your inspection form. Check all seams and make sure the tape is secure. Also, look for any holes, discoloration, rough spots, cracking, or tears that could indicate damage or deterioration and leakage. A complete liner inspection also requires a water penetration test be performed on the moisture barrier. This test requires special hydrostatic test equipment, most commonly known as the suitor apparatus. Through this apparatus or similar device, an area of the moisture barrier is isolated with a clamp to provide a watertight seal. Water is pressurized to 1 psi on the film side of the moisture barrier. After 15 seconds, with the water pressure still applied, check the substrate to see if water is penetrating. When testing areas with seams, Position the seams in the center of the isolated area, dividing it in half. You need to test the broadest parts of the shoulders, back waist area of the coat, and the knees, crotch area, and seat area of the pants. If potential damage was detected through visual inspections of your turnout components, test the corresponding areas of the moisture barrier. If water penetrates through the film and to the substrate on any area of the moisture barrier, note the location on your inspection form. The garment needs to be sent to the manufacturer or a verified ISP for repair. If the moisture barrier shows no leakage on any of the testing, then restitch the open seam. If the liner system has an inspection port, return it to its original configuration. Or, if it's a separable liner system, reattach the components of the system.